Hello my quilting friends! Leah Day here with a new video for the Machine Quilting Party. Today we're quilting Crazy Matrix. It's basically what you get when you take crazy curves and you stitch it in both directions to create a crazy wiggly grid. Super easy, super fast to stitch. So let's get on the machine and learn how to quilt this with walking foot style quilting. So I'm quilting Crazy Matrix and basically this is just a crazy curving grid design and it's really nice whenever you're not feeling like perfectly spacing your lines apart you can always use a design like this and just quilt random free form lines across your quilting space so i got started with this design by first stitching crazy curves which is just random curving lines across my quilting space and then now i'm stitching back across perpendicular to the first set of lines with more crazy curves so doubling it turns it into a grid design you do need to watch out as with all grid designs you need to look out for pleats and puckers and this can happen as you stitch back over already stitched lines you might see like the fabric moving in front of your foot so watch out for that you know especially if you start to see it forming pleats the biggest tip that i can give you and i've said this a lot of times this year and that is to start your fabric before basting your quilt whether it's a quilt or just a block like i'm working on starching it stiffens the fabric and stops it from stretching and moving out of shape Another thing to think about is how you place the design on your quilt. If you run this kind of on the diagonal, it has the potential to shift more fabric than if you run it just simply straight in line with the grain line of the fabric. You're gonna have less issues if you run with the grain line of the fabric. So this freeform design is very fast. As you can see, I can put my foot down. I'm kind of running the walking foot rather than walking and I'm running it a little faster than usual. And the reason is I feel like I can, you know, I'm very comfortable. It's a very fluid movement. You can also vary the scale or the distance between the lines of quilting. So here I'm gonna do a really wide spacing between my lines, but because I've already stabilized and secured the quilt together, that's okay. And it's just gonna open up the texture a little bit, make it look a little bit more random. You can also quilt some of the lines by echoing the line before it. So here, I think I'm gonna stitch over and maybe do a half inch echo. So I'll line up the edge of my walking foot or I'll kind of aim to line up the edge of my walking foot and I can stitch just a straight echo of that design. The more random and free form the design is, the better it's gonna look. So really play around with it and see what you what effects you like to see on your quilt. If you don't like how random and chaotic this is, you might wanna just try regular matrix. That's uh, you know plain curving lines where you echo each line repeatedly so you get a very formal grid design. I like both designs. I think they're both equally good. They're important to have in your quilting toolbox. So now I've switched over to my long arm and I am doing some free motion quilting slash ruler foot quilting on my long arm. And I'm gonna fill in this little narrow sashing space with more crazy matrix. So this starts with a simple crazy curves line. So I'm just stitching some curves really carefully in here and trying to make them very irregular, kind of widening the spacing, bringing them closer together. And you can see just how fast this is. On a long arm, I have what's called a stitch regulator. That is a uh, mechanism like a computer that basically keeps my stitches all the same size and shape. So it kind of has the same advantage of using a walking foot in the sense that all of my stitches are gonna come out the same shape but as you can see, I can steer the machine rather than the quilt. I'm moving the machine over the quilt instead of the quilt over underneath the needle. So here we go. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of ruler quilting because I wanna make sure that when I travel stitch back over this line, it's gonna be nice and neat and I'm not gonna be stitching off. As you can see, sometimes I'll build up, intentionally build up my thread there and I think that looks good, and it also hides my little stitch offs and mistakes. Okay, so now to turn this into crazy matrix, I wanna stitch right on top of it. We're gonna go in the opposite direction. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. 
widening my lines, narrowing them out, sometimes coming real close together, sometimes having a lot of distance between those lines. And you can see it creates this really funky freeform grid in that area. I think this is a great choice for sashing. You can see how fast it fills. I mean, it really, you know, it kind of just depends on how wide apart you want the lines. Here I'm kind of going a little dense, but you know, you could have less lines of quilting and it would definitely fill faster. Now, if I get a little bit messy on those eight edges, then again, I'm gonna grab my ruler and I'm lining this slice ruler up with the seam line before, because I was doing some echo ditching. That's spacing out your lines a quarter inch from those edges. And I'm just gonna stitch and help use that basically as a guide for my travel stitching. And you can see how that basically, it's kind of like adding a bold texture to your quilt. Uh, and I think that looks great. This is gonna be a tablecloth. Keep that in mind. So it's okay for me to go dense on this. It's okay for me to throw some extra thread at it. If this was a bed quilt, I probably wouldn't be quilting, number one, quilting this dense, and then number two, I probably wouldn't be bothering with all this travel stitching. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side, just to add a little bit more thread texture on those edges and help hide my mistakes. There we go. When in doubt, don't rip it out. Just throw more thread at it and you'll find that that's a lot easier, it's a lot faster. You know, even if as I'm travel stitching, I make some mistakes, go over it one more time. It's not the end of the world. Okay, looks like I need a few more lines going this way. Travel stitch carefully. I sometimes find I stop breathing <laughs> as I quilt those lines. Now I'll go a little bit this way. That looks good. There we go. I'm really pleased with that. And you can see I also filled that in in this space as well. Lots of different ways that you can use Crazy Matrix. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned a lot quilting Crazy Matrix with me today. It doesn't matter what type or style of quilting or machine that you're working on. The first step to quilting anything is just to experiment and play. Throw some thread at it and see what happens. That's what I'm doing on this tablecloth quilt. I'm just having a free motion quilting and ruler foot quilting adventure. And I hope that you'll come and find all of the videos that I've stitched on this quilt so far. Now, if you'd like to learn more about the long arm machine that I am using in these videos, it is the Grace Cunique 14 Plus, or it was recently renamed the 15R, because as I mentioned in this video, it has a stitch regulator that keeps all of my stitches the same small size. So very much like the advantage of using a walking foot, all of my stitches are the same size and I can stitch pretty much any design uh, and be guaranteed pretty looking stitches all the time. So if you'd like to learn more about long arm, the Grace Cunique 15R, come and check it out at leahday.com 15R. Until next time, let's go quilt.